So on Wednesday night at youth group, I am fortunate enough to get to attend and hang out. Um, we talked about their giggling. I don't know why they're giggling, but they are. We talked about prayer. And it was, it was a really interesting conversation to, to sit with teenagers who communicate uh, a lot different than I did at that age. Uh, we said, what's the best way to get, to get a hold of you guys? And they said, Snapchat. And I was like, I, I, I mentioned this in Sunday school. I'm 34, but dang, I'm old. <laughs> Snapchat. Woo. Um, no, if I wanted to get a hold of someone, I had to take that corded phone and stretch it all the way through the house and type it in and stand there and be like, all right, Grandma can't hear me. Um, but then Cole explained, well, you know, Snapchat, see, it is, is less professional. Snapchat is, is for the, uh, like, if you're going to do stuff, send me a funny video. Snapchat, you know, you just send a funny video. It's for funny, humorous, good times. Text messages are a touch more professional, you know. I know that it's important and I need to hear. And if you're sending me an email, it probably is a job offer. That's how professional that is. Communication is an ever-evolving thing. Um, it's, it's at an odd point. If you want to best get a hold of my wife to talk to her about something going on in church or, or something like that, you're best to text message her. Please don't text me. No, I'm really serious. Don't text me because I will read it and forget about it. Call me. Oh, I want to hear your voice. I want to speak to you. I'll come in and we'll have a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, communication is just is, 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 is a, an evolving thing. And, and like Pastor Bethany was talking with the little ones, she said, you know, how do you guys talk? Well, I go up and I, you know, um, James, I'm sorry. I think your sister pokes you a lot and pesters you at the same time. James, James, James. Is that how that works? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but how we communicate, how we, how we communicate with one another, but more importantly, how we communicate with God. We talked about that. And these kids, you know, what do we talk to God about? How do we, how do we approach God? How do we, how do we speak to God? What words do we use? Are our words even good enough? Sometimes, do we not even need to use words at all? Do we need to just be quiet? I was a little shocked with our with our youth that they didn't say singing was a way to talk to God. I would you know, they're all see there she didn't let her have it. They they all were part of that. Uh, Brian McLaren says he who sings prays twice. Or she, they who sing pray twice. How do we communicate with God? Paul Paul tells us today in Timothy, he encourages the church there to, to pray, to offer prayers on behalf of all people. We have our prayer list, right? You know, um, we set up our prayer list. Uh, I got a little, I got a purple um, thing uh, that has a calendar that has like prayer requests and stuff. So we, we go down and I mark, mark them off one by one, right? We kind of set it up like little ones do. Pray for mommy, pray for daddy, pray for Pastor Bethany, pray for my friend at school, pray for my brother who has a drinking problem. Pray for my son or daughter who seems to be struggling to make decisions in their lives. Pray for guidance. Sometimes our, our prayers become a bit egocentric. They become about us. We, we try to treat God a little bit like a, a divine vending machine. All right, God, I'm going to put in a dollar fifty, and you're going to give me a dollar. God, I'm going to put this time in, and, and, and you're going to heal this person. God, you're going to. Or I need this and I want that and I you gotta if, if I do this, we start to barter and trade and, and, and try to work with God in that way. But see, Paul calls us today out of the the selfish driven prayer life that sometimes we fall into, out of the, the checklist of so and so and this and that, but to to move beyond a small circle of prayer. To a global sense of prayer. Calls us to this away from checklists and inwardly focused to away from our immediate environment to this broader view. Calls us to this grand view in our prayer life. Which means we have to be actively engaged in knowing what's going on in the world. Paul calls us to pray for leaders, calls us to pray for everyone. The grand scale of what's going on. And, and I'm going to be honest, we live, we live through these tough times. I'm not saying tough times. I mean, I, I, 
But I'm saying these, these times where you either love the, the, the politicians we have or you hate them. You, you know, there's no middle ground. And, and I, that might be for reasons. But we, we, we live in these times where our media is, is like either putting them on a pedestal as the greatest person ever to live, any of them, or is, is burying them six feet under as the most demonic human being ever. And so we, we end up in that chasm, split. We're bombarded by the anti-this and the hate speech. We're, we watch, we watch this campaigns two years ago, or three years ago, now hasn't been. And we get a watch as they take off again, don't we? Who's excited? No? No one's thrilled for election seasons? No? I'm not either. Now we will take our civic duty. I can't tell you who to vote for from the pulpit. Well, I can now, but I'm not going to, and I never will. But I am going to tell you, vote. Take part in it. Because that's essentially what Paul's saying. Paul's saying, take part in it. Because our prayer life, when we pray, when we, we, we fill our lives of prayer about, about what's going on in the world, it then, as Pastor Bethany says, it doesn't change God's mind, but it changes who we are so that we take part in it. So go, take part in it. Paul, Paul is writing to, to a people who, who know oppression. So, so this pray for leaders and kings thing that he's saying, like, we'll pray for our leaders and kings, or well, we don't have kings, but our leaders, it's a lot different than them. I haven't ever been threatened to be thrown in a lion's den. I mean, I've never, you know, the cops aren't coming to my door dragging me out and saying, we're going to go feed you to some lions because you believe a certain thing. That's not happening to us. The government viewed the, the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers of the way they work to stamp them out because they cause revolution, they cause rebellion. Sent to Babylon. Christians, we are called to pray for people, for those whose actions have a great effect on others, even the rulers. The reasons for wisdom and to let society be peaceable and also because God is working for the salvation of all. We make petitions and intercessions and prayers and, and we're thankful for people. When we make petitions, we have to admit that we do not have control. We are not. We recognize the sovereignty of God. We say, God, you're in control. We are praying for you to do this work. We are sinners. We are broken and we need you. When we pray for intercessions, we're interceding for others, as Abraham did. It shows a heart attuned to God's mercy. When we intercede for others, God, God, I know that my friend is not well, or, or this is not going the way it should, or this, I need you to step in. And here's the thing. It's in those intercessory prayers that we are, we are more fully changed, I believe. When we're praying to, to intercede on someone's behalf, let's just take a stab at this. Uh, Ooh, it was two summers ago. Has it been two summers? Last summer. Yeah, it been two summers. We went down to Houston, Texas to do some mission work. Um, they'd gotten like 12 more inches of rain than they did with Harvey in 24 hours. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming Mr. David's house is full of water again. We went and we repaired this wonderful people's home for them. We got to take part and we got to experience them and be part of their lives. You know, when we see on the news and we pray to God, hey, do something. You know, do something, God. We need you to do something. And we pray and we pray and we pray and eventually five of us realized, oh, I should go and do something. When we pray to intercede on people's behalf, eventually it changes our heart that we intercede on people's behalf. I was once told when I was in New Orleans by a lady, we were fixing a house after Katrina, she gathered all my fraternity brothers, and she's crying, and she's just thankful, and she's kissing us, and hugging us, and uh, she says, I want you all to know this right now. 
more often than not, you're the miracle that you can pray. We're the miracle that you can pray. When we pray to intercede on people's behalf, we're not, more than likely, not going to change God's mind, but what we're going to do is change our own hearts so that we can go and step in and do something good for them. Whether it's here in Williamsburg, I would like to think that prayers of intercession from this church are what formed the program on Tuesdays. That we, we saw a need a need to, to help families get to spend time together, a need to do that work. And so it happened. We decided that, well, instead of just praying, maybe we should step up and start a program, do something about it. These conversations with God are give and take and give and take. And more often than not, they're changing to us. It's the hard one sometimes, though. Just to have gratitude for all people. Prayer is a thanksgiving. Prayer is a thanksgiving. Gratitude. Pastor Bethany said, you know, if we can just say I love you and thank you, maybe that's good enough. Profound gratitude. If we prayed in such a way that our lives were grounded in we were thankful for all those people. We were thankful for, for everything. We're thankful for those, for those people who we disagree with, who we struggle with, those people in power who we think are wrong, but we are grateful. I spent a lot of time on a mission trip with people that I disagree with theologically, societally, politically, I would assume, too. Um, and what it did is it offered me something profound. It offered me a deeper understanding of what I believed in in God. It offered me a deeper understanding of who I believe Jesus Christ was in my life. And at first, as I sat with some of these, I would call them yahoos, it was like, you guys are crazy. How do you believe this? I was frustrated. I was annoyed. I was irritated. I was, I was by some of their beliefs, enraged. But now as time has passed, I am so grateful for them. Because even though we disagreed, even though we didn't see faith the same way, we still were able to move past it and love one another. But more than that, they helped me become a fuller version of myself, and I am so grateful for them. And it is hard to be grateful for some of those people who drive us insane, make us really mad, hurt our feelings, say awful things for that coworker who just seems always negative and down and brings us down to their level. But we also can be grateful for those people who lift our spirit, who push us forward. Gratitude. Maybe Paul should have started his prayer life letter there to say, start with gratitude and then move to the other things because if we can say we're grateful it's a much easier step to say, God, be there for this person and that person. Christian Fellowship, Bonhoeffer says, Christian Fellowship lives and exists by the intercession of its members for one another, or it collapses. I can no longer condemn or hate a brother for whom I pray, no matter how much trouble he causes me. His face, his face that hitherto may have been strange or intolerable to me, is transformed in intercession into the countenance of the brother of whom Christ died for, the face of a forgiven son. Christian fellowship lives and exists by the intercession of its members for one another, or it collapses. Paul calls us to prayer. Paul calls us to pray for one another fully, to pray for those in power, to pray for in this community and globally. Not that minds are changed and they see everything the way we see everything. But rather that the wisdom of God moves in through them. And that we can be part of their life and their work. Brothers and sisters, may our lives be filled with prayer. 
May we be grateful every day for the way God works and moves and others, even though we don't agree, even though we don't see it the same way. And may we boldly pray for one another. May we boldly lift one another up.